What we're going to be going over here is an example where we're going to be looking at the cash flow for the sale and purchase of some property, plant, and equipment. And when we're talking about cash flows, we're talking about the statement of cash flows. And for the statement of the cash flows, we really have three different activity sections that we're looking at. We're going to have the investing activity section. That's how the company invests in their assets. And then we're going to have the financing section here. That's how they finance their assets here, their investments. And either through it, do it through issuing liabilities or would be like bonds payable, notes payable, so forth, or through issuing stock and part of stockholders' equity. And then thirdly, in our, on our cash flow statement, we'd have the operating section, and that's the operations of the company, and that would be uh, its net income on its income statement that you'd be looking at. But for our example here, we're going to look at the interaction here between our liabilities, our financing through a liability here, and in investing in this piece of equipment here. And we're going to be looking at two cases here. This investments where we're going to be actually purchasing some equipment, and let's go down and look at it, and also selling some equipment. So we're looking at two different cases here. So when we're talking about our investing activities here, we're really talking about long-term assets, and it would be that property, plant, and equipment account. So first, we're going to look at the purchase of some uh, a, a piece of equipment here. and through that purchase here, we're not going to directly pay cash for the equipment. What we're going to do here is we're going to issue a bonds payable or debt here for exchange of this equipment. So what we're going to give uh, the uh, seller of this equipment, the seller is going to give us the piece of equipment, but what we're going to do is we're going to give uh, issue or give that seller a bonds payable in this case, for example. It could be a notes payable as well, but let's just say it's a bonds payable here. And for exchange of the equipment. So they're going to give us the equipment. We're going to issue or issue, give them a, an IOU here for the purchase here of the equipment. And uh, secondly, we're going to look at this sale of a separate uh, sale here of some additional equipment that we're looking at. And then when we're talking about these long-term assets here, you also, this is what you have your contra asset account, your depreciation account, your accumulated depreciation account. So for our example here, we're really going to be dealing with our property, plant, and equipment. Our assets are investing here in those property, plants, and equipment. And then also when you're talking about that, you're going to have your accumulated depreciation that has to be included. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, this li long. When we're talking about the liabilities here, we're really talking about uh, long-term liabilities, and that we're going to be issuing debt here in this case. And what we have to do in both cases here, we have to determine the actual change in cash that is being made here for these transactions versus our non-cash. Uh, trans, a part of the transaction. So we really have uh, two things to deal with. The actual change in cash here versus, versus any non-cash. Uh, when we're talking about ish financing this uh, investment here in this piece of equipment. And also we're going to be looking here at the sale of some equipment. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at our example here. So this is what we're going to be given here in our problem. Uh, we're going to have some equipment costing $90,000 and it's going to be sold for cash. Now, the $90,000, that's what it originally cost when we bought this equipment. It's been depreciated for a few years here and now it has a lower uh, carrying value after its depreciation. So, it's, we're going to have to determine uh, what cash we're going to actually receive here on, on what we would include as a change in cash here on selling this equipment. And then secondly here, we're going to be dealing with this uh, bonds payable is going to be issued for $50,000 in exchange for a piece of equipment. So uh, we're going to pay the seller of the equipment, not in cash, but we're going to issue them some, an IOU here in terms of a bonds payable. And then thirdly here, uh, we're going to we're given here a gain on the sale of this piece of equipment that we sold here for cash, and the gain here is twenty nine thousand dollars. Okay, so let's go and let's look at how we calculate our chain, our non cash and our cash transactions. So again, dealing with. Uh, our investments here, we've got two accounts that we have to deal with. We've got that property, plant, and equipment account. That's our asset account. And then we have, again, our accumulated depreciation here. That's the contra asset account here. So accumulated depreciation is what we're charging off against our property, plant, and equipment. Okay, so what we have to do here, starting with our, determine our actual investments. And I've got it laid out in T account form here. And when, and this is really the easiest way to deal with 
uh, trying to determine what's going on. You have to set up this, you go on, determine what's going on in your uh, long-term asset account here as property plan equipment. Okay, so let's, this is what we'd be given here. Uh, let's just say for the beginning, we have to know what the beginning amount here, you know, a balance is for the beginning of the year here in our uh, equipment account here and let's just say it was sitting here at four hundred ninety thousand dollars debit amount and now uh, what we want to do here is we want to determine the increases that we had in uh, in our property plant and equipment and we're gonna we're gonna have two cases here we're gonna have an increase in our equipment due to the uh, exchange of that bonds payable or that IOU that we're issuing for that piece of equipment and then we're gonna have some an additional uh, investments here in uh, some property plant and equipment and additional machinery here and we're going to have to determine that amount but this is how we go about doing it here so what we would have to start with is our beginning amount here in our property plant and equipment account here and then we'd have to know what our ending amount is in our uh, property plant and equipment account and then we can look at our transactions so let's say we started out here debit amount four hundred ninety thousand everything is in thousands of dollars here uh, in our beginning balance now we sell off that piece of equipment here we it was sitting on the books here at ninety thousand dollars so we have to credit or reduce our uh, asset account here by ninety thousand dollars now the, we, the next thing we know here, we did exchange that bonds payable or it, give them an IOU for that $50,000 worth of equipment. IOU bonds payable was issued for $50,000. So we increase our equipment account here by $50,000 because that is the uh, value here in exchange, $50,000. Now the next thing is determine the amount or the increase, uh, remaining increase here in our equipment account here for the year. So what we would do is just, for, let's just go back and do our arithmetic here. And one thing I want to point out here, when we're talking about this property, plant, and equipment, the sell-off here of the $90,000, the original cost or the original carrying value on that equipment, we also have the accumulated depreciation on it. We're going to have to cal we're going to go through and calculate that here, but under accumulated depreciation, that would have to be also removed off the books and I'm showing at 54,000. We're going to go through the calculation on that how we'd calculate it, but those two work hand in hand here. So when we sell off, uh, we reduce our equipment account here. We also have to reduce whatever the carrying amount was remaining depreciation on the on the a depreciation on a piece of equipment that has to also be removed off the books so going back to our example here uh, we're determined we okay let's just go through it here we had that four hundred ninety thousand we sold off or remove we have to remove the ninety thousand dollars worth of the original cost of that equipment now we increase our uh, uh, equipment account here by fifty thousand dollars for that piece of equipment we received in exchange for our notes payable then the balancing amount here is going to go into the additional equipment that we purchase here and that's going to be hundred thousand dollars and that's simply a balancing amount between our debits and credits that we had we had our beginning balance we knew we knew our ending balance we know what we sold off what we had to reduce it by we knew what equipment was being in the equipment account being increased here for the exchange of that debt so the balancing amount is going to be one hundred thousand dollars to increase our account here so what does all that mean here so when we when we look at our cash here so first for our non-cash investing and financing and that would be under our cash flow statement we'd have to include that in our cash flow statement as a non-cash investing in a financing activity here and that was that exchange for the bonds payable no cash exchange it did increase our equipment account here but that is a non-cash transaction and now let's just say the hundred thousand dollars here for the uh, increase here the additional increase in our equipment account for the year uh, that we had to determine payments based on our the other uh, items that we knew here the balancing amount here let's just say if it was paid in cash here uh, for that that additional equipment if if it was actually paid in cash then it would be a change in cash and that would go uh, in our cash flow statement as a change in cash if it was an IOU was issued or there was no immediate change in cash then it would have to be a non-cash transaction. Now remember this exchange here for the bonds payable 
it is a non-cash transaction when it was issued here because we didn't have any cash change but down the road here when you have to pay it off here your bond or your notes payable then it would become a cash transaction okay so we've taken care of our investments here we knew our, we had to determine the additional amount here of our investments for the year based on what we already knew okay so let's move over to our accumulated depreciation account here and really what we want to do here is we want to determine the change in cash for the sale of some equipment here. This is separate from our purchase here. This is in a separate uh, situation here. We're gonna sell that equipment here. So looking at what we already know, and this is what we have to deal with. You start out with this accumulated depreciation account, and what you have to do is determine depreciation of the equipment that was sold. Now, we looked at that already here. This is, we're gonna have to remove that uh, depreciation off the book for the equipment that it was sold. But this is how you go about calculating. Uh, again, you start out with your beginning amount here that you had, and let's say it was 330000 so we had that credit at here. And then for the year here, we also had some extra on the existing equipment that we had, or our current equipment, we have an additional 76000 in our accumulated depreciation account here. So that would increase our accumulated depreciation, credit it, reduce, increase it here, and then we know what our end of the year balance was in our accumulated depreciation. Say it was 352000 So uh, to calculate our depreciation on that equipment sold, it simply becomes a balancing amount. Take whatever your beginning amount was for the year, your additions for the year here in accumulated depreciation, and compare it to your ending amount here in your depreciation. And you'll see that you're going to have to come up with a debit or reduction here of 54000 That was for the equipment sold. So that's how we go about calculating our depreciation here in equipment sold. And this is going to be critical here to determine our change in cash. Okay, so step two here. Step one, we determined our depreciation here on that equipment so now step two, we're going to have to determine the change in cash here for the sale of that piece of equipment. Okay, so this is how you lay that out. And this really becomes a, a balancing amount here. The cash received, that's going to be our change in cash. And we're going to calculate that to be $65,000. And it's going to be a balance here between our debits and credits. Okay, so what we went and we calculated that accumulated depreciation here on that equipment sold, and this is what we're talking about on the sale of that equipment here. So we would have credited our accumulated depreciation, or debited, excuse me, here by $54,000. Now, the property plant in that a piece of equipment here, we would have removed it off the books. Remember, we had our asset account here for the equipment or property plant equipment. We credited it for $90,000. That was a given here. And then the gain on the sale of the equipment, that was coming off our income statement here. We would have credited that here for $29,000 on our income statement. Gain on sale, remember this is a non-cash transaction on our income statement. It didn't involve any cash. So what we 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 determined our remaining depreciation on the equipment sold. That's why we went through our accumulated depreciation account here. And that we had to come up with here to determine the cash received. And it becomes, so we know what our accumulated depreciation, we have a debit here of 54,000. We have our credits here of 90,000 for uh, the sale of that piece of equipment off our uh, equipment account here. And then we had the gain on the sale of 29,000. So the balancing amount would go to our cash received here of $65,000. So that is the change in cash here on the sale of equipment. So we looked at, let's go back to it here, we looked at two cases here where we had to determine the uh, uh, property, plant, and equipment account, what we've made our investments for the year based on a sale here in the uh, exchange for some, uh, a non-cash exchange here on an IOU, and then we also had to determine for the year here any uh, the addition we had we had an addition here in some property plant and equipment and then we have to determine if it's cash or non-cash and then uh, based on uh, this contra account here our accumulated depreciation we had to determine how much the uh, depreciation would have to be written off here for that equipment sold or it had to reduce our accumulated depreciation by that amount and based on that we were able to determine and also what our sales here on our, our, our taking our property plant and equipment off the book and a gain that we had on the sale then we could determine 
the change in cash. So that'll just go over a basic example here. Just remember when you're dealing with these type of problems here, just lay it out in T-account form and look at um, the transactions that have to have that take place. And then you have to determine if they're non-cash or cash or change in cash here for the cash flow statement that you'd be dealing with either in an investing or financing activity in this example. Okay, so that'll summarize it.